The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today is Knowing the Voice Part 2. We ran out of time yesterday on being able to fully go over everything that I wanted to talk about. So we're going to jump back into this lesson again. If you don't remember what we talked about yesterday, we're going to recap it just a little bit in the beginning, but just one quick announcement. We did have our End Times curriculum last night where we went through the Church of Philadelphia if you have not got a chance to go through and watch that, it's one of the most important and powerful churches out of the churches of the book of the Revelation. So you want to make sure that you go and you're following along. We are almost through with the semester. We're only coming up on a couple last weeks before our curriculums will be finished for not only the semester, but also the quarters are finishing too. So we want to make sure that you participate in all that you can. Don't get behind but also get prepared and get ready. If there's a discipleship class you're looking to take, look at the schedule, see what's being offered next quarter. We're gonna be releasing a sale very soon to, to give you an opportunity to buy their curriculums at a reduced price. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do some amazing things uh, next semester. We got a couple things that we're working on. I don't know if we will release them or not going into the into quarter three but if not we'll release them in quarter four going into the spring so we got just a couple things we're working on the lord's moving in a in a variety of different ways in this ministry so we just want to make sure that we're doing exactly what god has spoken to us to do so let me pray and then we're going to jump right into this lesson because we got a lot to go over today so father i thank you I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, go with me to 1 Kings 17. We're going to start here. And Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. 
So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Now yesterday, we went back over a teaching that we started and we have done before in our series on provision and obedience. When we were dealing with provision and obedience, we talked about this verse 2 and verse 8, which is the word of the Lord coming unto Elijah saying, and the word said means it proceeds out of the mouth, and the word is actually reference to speech or reference to the tongue. It's not reference to the lip because the lip changed at the Tower of Babel. The whole earth used to be of one language and of one speech. But the language is shifted. That's why we need interpretation now. But God speaks us into the same speech according to the tongue, allowing you to understand. Everybody has the ability to understand and to hear from God. And then yesterday we went into John chapter 10. We're going to go ahead and read the passage. And then I'm going to talk for a second. Then I'm going to give you two foundational understandings. And I'm going to give two corrections. I'm going to re-go back through them as we did yesterday. But I want to re-explain my heart and why we're teaching this. Because so often the church as a whole or everybody looking into the church has decided that if you don't only and wholeheartedly teach the Bible, if you speak about anything else, then it's it's not biblical. Well, here's something I want you to ponder and consider, and I'm going to tell you what that word ponder means in a little while. But when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he taught them how to wash their hands. Well, how is washing their hands pertaining to anything that has to do with the Bible? Well, it's because God is not just in your spiritual life. He's in your personal life. He's in your professional life. He wants to be with you on every step of the way. And it's the role of the church to mature you, to grow you up. And one of the ways we grow you up is through the Word. And through the Word, we learn interpersonal communication skills. We learn social, uh, cultural skills. We learn things that help us in every facet of life. And so my job as a, as a teacher and as your pastor is to correct you in certain things that pertain to the Word of God. So we read through John 10 in just a second. It pertains to the corrections that I'm making when it comes to how you communicate with others. John 10, Verily I say unto you, Verily, verily I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. Jesus wants you to have life and life more abundantly. And then the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. And we know that we hear the voice of God because it's of the same speech. It's of the same tongue. We have the ability to understand what God is speaking to us. And the devil, it says, we know not the voice of strangers. Okay, so we need to talk for just a minute about what this means. We know not the voice of strangers. If you were to take a quick glance at this passage, and you, people always say, you know the voice of the good shepherd, a stranger you will not follow. You know not the voice of strangers. 
And and that right there is, is a powerful truth if it's understood correctly. The thing that you must understand is you know the voice of God. When God speaks to you, you hear Him and you hear Him clearly. But a stranger's voice, you don't know and you don't follow. Well, what does it mean to not know the voice of strangers? Know not. Well, what does it mean to know something? To know something is to perceive it or to have a connection to it or to have familiarity with it. Knowing has to do with familiarity. So listen to this. It's not the fact that you don't hear the voice of the stranger. It's that you know not the voice of the stranger. Let me say it better than this. You can hear the lie of the enemy, but because you have no familiarity with that voice, with the one that is speaking, I have no connection with the enemy. Me and him don't get along. I'm not connected to the devil. I'm a born again believer, bought with a price. I have been uh, brought into the kingdom of God's dear son, translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, redeemed with a price. Like I'm not connected to the enemy no more. And because I'm not connected to him, I have no familiarity with him. I, I don't know you. I, I'm not connected to you. And because of that, it's not the fact that I don't hear you. It's the fact that I don't know you when I hear you. I hear your words that you speak to me, but your words are lies. And because I don't know you, I have no familiarity with you. I don't trust you. Then I don't follow you. My, your, your kids follow their parents because there's a familiarity with that. They trust their parents. They have connection to their parents, so they follow their parents. They don't go with strangers because the first thing they say is, I don't know you. How am I supposed to trust what you say to me if I don't know you? We talked about this yesterday for a little bit. What's the easiest way to know God? Well, you spend time in God's word. It's a great way to know God. And it's a great thing to know God when you pray and you worship and you spend time in the secret place. So knowing God comes from a root foundation in His Word. You might receive something prophetically, but it'll never come against God's Word if it's God. If you're hearing the voice and it doesn't line up with the Word of God, then it's not God. I know not the voice that comes contrary to my Bible. I don't have any familiarity with that. It's a lie. And I don't and I don't follow things that contradict what God has said. God is not a man that he should lie and he never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God holds his word even above his own name. So his word will never change. And because of this, I know not the voice of strangers. Now, yesterday we talked about two scenarios. We talked about a scenario, and these are very practical applications in your life. One where, I'm going to use myself as the example. If I spoke a prophetic word to you, if I said, thus saith the Lord God, and I prophetically spoke, or if I said, God said for me to tell you this, I may have received it in a vision, in a dream. I may have received it from hearing it, but God to told me to tell you, if I say that, and I say this is from God, now, I could just give you my advice and my opinion if you want it. I will give it for what I know according to the word. But when I speak prophetically, I'm saying this is the voice of God speaking. I'm the mouthpiece of God at that point. I'm just giving you a word. I've had people for many times, after I declare the word, when other friends come around, they'll say, tell them what you told me. And the thing I tell them is, that word has nothing to do with that other friend. That word was for you. And you need to protect the word. Because you know not the voice of strangers. Now that might be a God-fearing person right there. That might be one of the most amazing godly men or women. And, and you might be dear friends with them. But it's not my responsibility to tell them. And honestly, it's up to you. You can tell them if you, if you know that person, if you have familiarity with that person, if they have a record of speaking from God and speaking the truth and walking with the Lord, maybe you want to tell them. 
or maybe you don't tell them. But the thing I want you to know is it's not. I I was yesterday I was a, a little fired up about this because it, it happens so often and, and for me it's immaturity. It's because you don't know the undergirding part of the truth that frustrates me with this with people. Like, don't put me in the situation to have to say it to somebody else because I'm not going to. And I'm gonna and it's gonna be embarrassing to you because I'm gonna look at you and say, no, I don't have to tell that person, or no, I'm not gonna tell them. You tell them if you want to. It's very embarrassing when that happens. But the reason why I say it is because I understand the truth that you don't want to allow the enemy to speak after God has spoke. Because that person might be a God-fearing person, but they might hear a lie of the devil and speak it over you. We've declared the Word of God. It lines up with the Word of God. It witnesses in the Spirit. Why would you ever let anybody else speak into it? Because what if the person that you get and you tell or you get the person to speak to, you know, you start sharing that word, maybe somebody gets jealous. Maybe somebody gets offended. That God's speaking it to you and not to them. And maybe they decide to start speaking as the devil over that word. Now who are you going to believe? Remember, God sows wheat. The enemy sows tares. These things are not uh, secondary importance in your life. This is a fundamental fact. And this is why we're talking about it. It's very important. I don't, I don't talk to people about these things because I'm upset at people. I'm, I'm telling you because you have to grow up. You have to stop acting like children. And you have to start realizing that there are things that you don't share with others. Another thing we talked about yesterday is us having a conversation. If me and you have a conversation and and I say, or let's say you say, me and you are in a private conversation, one-on-one, and you say, hey, you should share this with person C. And I say, absolutely. When person C enters into the picture and you say, hey, Pastor Cody, remember you were telling me about this and I said you should share it with this person. You're reminding me of what I agreed to. But if I have a personal conversation with you and then another person comes in and it was something I was sharing to you, if I don't share it with the other person, it is not your place to start asking me to share it with them. You might say, well, Cody, why does it matter? Because it's a respect thing. You don't share other people's business. I grew up in the deep south. Some of these things I felt like were very, uh, everybody grew up learning them. All their parents taught them these things. I felt like they learned these things in school. But as I moved to Chicago, I've learned very often that people will push issues. If you ask me a question and I brush it off or I give you a short answer and then you ask me two, three, four times repetitive repetitive questions about the same topic, I'm going to eventually tell you to be quiet. I'm going to tell you it's none of your business. There should be nonverbal cues where you understand that that person doesn't want to talk about it. And for you to push the issue is immature. It shows your lack of maturity. Or for you to start bringing up other people's conversations in front of other people. It's immature and you need to grow up. But the undergirding truth behind it is the fact that if if I share something with you, I share it in confidence that it's me and you. If you share something with me, it's in confidence that it's you and me. It's not my place to share it when somebody else shows up. Nor is it your place to share what I said when somebody else shows up. That right there is, unless we've agreed to share it, then it stays private. You might say, well, Cody, why are are these two things so big? Interpersonal communication that is private versus public conversation? Or prophetic words being spoken forth where somebody asks me to tell somebody else? Why are these such big issues? Why is this something that I'm very passionate about yesterday and today to make sure that I tell you to correct you? Why is it so much of a big deal? It's because of the truth of John 10. It's the fact that the enemy wants to kill and destroy and steal from you. 
And the way he does that is by using people to step in and speak his words. Listen, the only people, the only way the devil or God has access into your life is if you let it. It's all about what you allow to come in. Because you have dominion over yourself. You can allow it in or out of your life. So you can allow God to move in your life if the word of God is sown in your heart and it grows up and you protect it. But the enemy can sow those tares if you allow him to speak into your life. You need to learn when to reject. I have people speak things to me and say, and they'll, they'll say, oh, you're going to get sick. And I say, I don't receive that. I rebuke that. That has no place in my life. And that person usually will get offended when I say that. And I'm like, I'm not being mean to you. I'm just telling you, you don't speak the lies of the devil over me. I won't receive it. So there are times when you need to protect the words that are being gone forth over your life. Not every conversation is meant to be shared with other people. Especially when the other person does not walk in the truth. If the person you're sharing it with isn't walking with God, or they're not walking with God on a regular basis, if you don't know them, if you can't trust that there's not a familiarity in that, that what they speak is from God, then you don't share the things that are of God. Because you you start sharing that, they'll start speaking that doubt, that unbelief. They'll be trying to do everything they can to convince you that what was spoken was wrong. And eventually you will not see the fruit of God producing your life at all because you've allowed all these other voices to speak in. You have no familiarity with it. The Bible says you know not the voice of strangers. You will not follow it. But you keep allowing it into your life to dictate what you do. And I have people say, well, I'm not not letting that change me. If it's being spoken over you, then you're letting it change you. Because every time they speak that, you let it into your mind. You start to think about it. Listen to this voice. Uh, Luke 2, verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. You might say, well, what does that have to do with this? Well, this is dealing with the birth of Jesus when the wise men showed up, the shepherds showed up. And she took the word of God and she took the voice of the shepherd and pondered them. Well, what does it mean to ponder? It means to connect them, to put them together. That's what pondering means. Pondering, people think, oh, that just means you think about it. No, it means to take two separate thoughts and to figure out how they're connected together. How is an angel speaking to Mary about having a virgin birth and the shepherds showing up declaring the Messiah And all of these things that's being spoken and Elizabeth and Zacharias having John the Baptist and how she's pondering all of these things together. She's taking the word of God and pondering it with the voice that God was using through the shepherds. The same thing over your life. When you read the word of God and then a word is spoken over you. And when you, when you receive a prophetic word or you're having a conversation with somebody about something, you start to ponder it. You start to put these things together. And when you put them together, it will work in one of two ways. The first way is it's God speaking and God connecting it where all of the things of God's plan, purpose, and path over your life come together. And it shows you direction. It brings forth stability and security. It brings forth strength that what God has spoken is true. The prophetic word of God, when it came forth over my life and the visions I saw of Chicago, not only did they come to pass where I saw them physically manifest after I saw them in a vision, but they lined up with the word. And then I got here and the words kept coming and I started to ponder them. I started to take all of the words that I've been getting from God and putting them together to see the full picture and to see what God is doing in my life. But if I were to receive these words of God and then allow somebody else to speak into my life and I start to ponder those thoughts, you know, all their doubt, all their unbelief, all their fear, all of those things that they say and I start to ponder that, then it will corrupt the seed. It will cause the word of God to become unfruitful in your life. 
the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things entering in, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You might say, well, what are all those things? That's all the other things that people speak over you. So I give you this teaching on hearing the voice, hearing the voice of God very clearly because the first thing you need to know is you do hear God. The second thing you need to know is that you hear God and you know Him because you're familiar with Him because you study your Bible. You know what God says. And not only that, but you've, you hear the voice of the devil, but you don't know Him, so you don't follow Him. You reject it. And because of that, when you're having conversations with people, somebody speaks something to you, somebody shares something with you, you are not... Besides the fact it's disrespectful and it's immature to try to bring that up with somebody else. The other part of it is when you do that, you're allowing an opening for the devil to come in and steal the word of God from you. And in doing that, your promises will never come to pass. So you have to learn to protect the word and protect your heart. Because knowing God's voice is the most important thing. And you know not the voice of strangers. So stop listening to it and stop pondering it. Stop allowing those people to speak into your life and to dictate what you believe about the Word of God. We're out of time today, so Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. God, let this Word come alive as we learn not to receive words from people that don't speak according to the Word of God. And Father, we thank you for it. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, have a wonderful day today. Remember, we had our class last night. If you didn't get a chance, please make sure you go in and watch it. Church, we will see you tomorrow, and then we'll see you Sunday morning at 9 a.m. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow Oh, the troubles to come The lily's not thinking about the seasons The drought or the flood The tree that's planted by the Should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. And you know what I need before I even ask the thing. And you hold me in your hands with the kindness that never ends. I'm carried in your love, no matter what the future brings. The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it cast. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Take good care of me. You take good care of me.